Joining me now is Trump 2020 National Press Secretary Hogan Gidley. Hogan, it's great to see you. Notably absent is Dr. Fauci. Dr. Anthony Fauci says he was not asked to join the president's briefing today. Your reaction? Well, there's a reason that we're getting closer and closer to the therapeutics and the vaccine the president talked about. It's because people are actually working. Let's not forget, the president is the one who set up this coronavirus task force, and he asked our amazing vice president, Mike Pence, to lead it. In those meetings, the president's in them sometimes, but all those doctors are in there talking to the vice president, relaying all the information to him, and the president meets with the vice president multiple times a day. I wouldn't read a thing into that. Uh, that Dr. Fauci wasn't at the briefing. Dr. Burks, Dr. Redfield, Dr. Hahn, all of them are around the White House all of the time. They always communicate with the president, have conversations. They're studying this virus. The science is changing. As you know, what we knew in January is not what we know now. Things are different. And the masks the president talked about today are important to preventing the spread. Uh, he pulled, even pulled one out of his pocket and said, I wear one. That's just nothing new for people who know him, like myself, and who are pe uh, people who are with him a lot, like myself. And uh, that's leadership, what you saw up there today, Liz, because let's be honest, a lot of presidents, a lot of elected officials would not go to a podium and deliver bad news to the American people. They only show up in times of, of plenty for ribbon cuttings and trade deals. And this president talks directly to the American people and says, hey, it's going to get worse before it gets better, but we will get through this together. And that's the leadership of Donald Trump. Okay, also this, reports of the coronavirus task force document released by the Center for Public Integrity that the task force was going to recommend to governors in 18 states to dial back their reopenings because they are in the red zone for new cases. Your reaction to that? Because of what? I'm sorry, I missed the last part of that. So basically the, 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 the White House Coronavirus Task Force was going to advise governors in 18 states to dial back on their reopening because they are in the red zone for new cases. That could involve also battleground states. Your reaction to that? The Center for Public Integrity has that report. All right. Well, we're talking about American lives here, and the president is on the front lines of this fight. He deals with his medical experts, his health experts, the scientists every single day. He makes recommendations based on what he hears. Let's not forget, it was the president who shut down ch travel from China and from Europe. Uh, it was it was a, a decision that was, quite frankly, pilloried in the mainstream media. Joe Biden even called it uh, racist and xenophobic. And then a month later realized it probably saved lives and had to come out and say, Donald Trump was right. I was wrong. And uh, it was smart to do so. So the president has made decisions uh, based on the scientific evidence he's given. And we'll see what happens as it relates to the guidelines and the guidance moving forward in those states. What about the reaction to the controversy? The president decided he did not like the CDC's guidelines for schools uh, to reopen and order the CDC to revise them. Uh, and also the move by the Trump administration to basically shift the collection of hospital COVID data to HHS away from CDC. Your take on that? Well, you've seen some missteps and, and mistakes by the CDC. The president wants accurate data. Let's be honest. The way you end up combating viruses like these is with information. And we had no information early on because China lied to the world. It lied to the United States. The WHO was complicit in that lie, covering up for China. And the president saw that malfeasance and says, we're not going to fund the WHO. We're not going to keep spending hundreds of millions of dollars to an organization that won't be open and honest with the globe. Contrast that with Joe Biden. One of the things he said he wants to do is actually refund the WHO. Go figure. He wants to defund the police, but refund the WHO. It makes no sense at all. But the president wants this country to reopen. He's been very clear about that, but he wants to do it in a safe manner. We're talking about American lives. We're talking about the safety and security of the American people, their health. And the president has taken a very sobering approach to this, dealing with those who know it best, these dis um, infectious disease experts. And let's be clear, while Dr. Fauci, Dr. Yeah. Birx, and others are, uh, are completely experts, in this field, no one's an expert on coronavirus yet. This is something that's brand new. We had to develop tests. We had to develop uh, information based on what we know now across the globe. And China was not forthcoming yeah. in that. And that's why the president's been so hard on, on that country. I hear you. The SARS coronavirus 1 was 2003 and it went away within months. This is coronavirus, SARS 2 coronavirus. It's a a different kind of a, a virus. Uh, to the story that the White House released a statement to reporters noting the times that Dr. Fauci, quote, has been wrong on things, including Dr. Fauci's doubts early on about asymptomatic spread, 
questioning whether face masks were needed. Again, that was early on in the outbreak. Uh, should you give them a pass on that? Because White, tr uh, Trump trade advisor Peter Navarro cited the same objections to Dr. Fauci, Fauci in that USA Today, uh, Today op-ed. What, what do you think about that? Look, I'm not going to get into any any perceived or reported palace intrigue. I dealt with that enough in the White House. I'm sure not going to deal with it here at the campaign, especially when it's at the White House and not here. But let's be honest. I mean, the CDC uh, wasn't sure about masks early on. There's still some cl conflicting reports, both from them and the WHO. Other entities like Johns Hopkins also pointed out they're not necessarily sure how effective they are. But what we know now is that there is a strong percentage of people who don't get COVID if you can't social distance to wear those masks. So that's what the president was talking about here. And it's okay to point out that, you know, scientists, uh, their theories are meant to be tested and meant to be challenged. And so when I was in those rooms, we would talk about the data. What does it actually mean? What is it telling us? Dr. Fauci had good data. He's a good man, a good person. He's very smart. So is uh, Dr. Burke. She's an incredible woman. And, and all the doctors around the table had differing opinions a lot of times. But it comes down to the president of the okay. United States who has to make the decisions. And so when you hear from the scientists who say shut everything mm -hmm. down, you hear from economists who say open everything up, there has to be a balance to do it the right way to protect the American people, not just health, uh, their health, I, I, but I wanna, their economy as well. I want to give you this data. It's been published in medical journals. It's about it, it's going to give the viewer the perspective on this virus. It's new data. It, it, Hogan, it's talking about the death rate for COVID-19 uh, is about 36 per 100,000 in the U.S., but that's far below the Asian and Hong Kong flus of the 1950s and 60s, both for the world and the U.S. The world rate is about 7 per 100,000. By the way, the world population was about half of today, is about half today what it was, uh, you know, it's, it's the popular world population back, let me back up, was way smaller back then. So the media seems to be misreporting what is going on with this virus, and most, most of the outbreak is really taking out uh, 90 percent of all death occurs with elderly over 70 years of age, Hogan, and wait for it. They already have pre-existing conditions like kidney disease, lung disease, heart disease, obesity, but the majority of the elderly do recover. So, you know, that's the issue. Is the science reporting, is the media reporting the science on this correctly? What do you think? Or are they, or are they overreacting? That's what a do great you say? Uh, no, look, look, the media, I think a lot of times they just report the narrative they want out there, the narrative they want to drive. And let's be clear, a lot of the people who are uh, on television now, the talking heads are praising someone like Governor Cuomo, where a massive amount of deaths occurred uh, in, in his state, upwards of 10 times that of Florida, which has a similar population. And part of that is because even when we actually knew it affected the elderly more with those comorbidities, those, pre, those pre-existing conditions, as you just talked about, he kept sending people back to nursing homes. Also, early on, some of the predictions, 2.2 million deaths in this country if we did nothing. Donald Trump is the leader here. He's the one who had the bold, decisive, strong actions, and those actions saved lives. And let's be clear, when Joe Biden and his administration were in charge and they faced a pandemic, all they did was just say, we're not going to test him anymore. We know it's spreading across the country. We don't want to, quote unquote, waste yeah. the resources. The difference is clear. Leadership of President Donald Trump saved lives and will move us in past coronavirus to a healthy nation. Hoga Gidley, thank you so much for joining us. Come back soon. Absolutely. Will do.